Hello, my dear friends. Today, me and my mom, she's visiting me in St. Petersburg. So today we're cooking uh, a Ukrainian dish, which is borscht. And um, nowadays, uh, especially after the 24th of February, there were a lot of disputes from the Russian side, of course, that uh, borscht is a Russian soup, but of course, everyone knows that borscht is a Ukrainian soup. A Russian soup is she. So today we're cooking borscht together with my mom. And um, maybe, maybe uh, when I will, I will be visiting my mom in Belarus, we will be cooking she, a Russian soup. So why um, Russians and Ukrainians are disputing about the origins of borscht? Uh, I think because um, when we were living in the Soviet Union, everything was uh, so, you know, mixed cultures, mixed uh, populations uh, mixed with each other, you know, for example, uh, Russians are also fond of uh, Armenian shashlik, uh, Georgian hachapuri, um, I don't know, Belarusian uh, draniki, and um, everyone, you know, how to cook it in Russia. However, the original style recipe you will find when you visit the country. For example, if you want to cook shashlik, uh, of course you can try shashlik in Russia or Ukraine or in Belarus, but the original, uh, the um, like natural, the um, real shashlik you will taste in Armenia. And of course, uh, shashlik which is cooked by Armenian will be just Wow. Uh, and of course, uh, if you want to taste like a real borscht, of course, you have to um, take the recipe from a Ukrainian person. Uh, for example, they uh, cook um, it their way. So what we need for borscht? We need beetroot, potatoes, cabbage, carrots, onions, and a, a little bit of garlic. We need uh, tomatoes, bay leaf, we need broth, uh, we have chicken broth, but you can um, take any meat that you like, for example, pork, uh, beef, uh, and even other meats. So here is our broth, so here is what we need. So we have our broth cold because we were cooking it in the morning. Uh, so now we heat in our broth. So here is how much we need uh, cabbage. So here is uh, how much we need and here is the rest. <laughs> Almost the, the whole cabbage is left and we need only this. So we need to chop it like this. So cabbage is the first to go into pan. Now we are waiting for the broth to start boiling. As soon as it starts boiling, we, we are starting to chop the potatoes. And after we chop the potatoes, we will put them to the uh, pan too. So meanwhile, we are grating our beetroot, our uh, carrots together. A little bit of vegetable oil. And by the way, one beetroot was enough for our pan. So now we are grating the carrots. Uh, so we are adding a little bit more oil, adding our carrots, now we are chopping our onions. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, my dear friends, what's interesting about borscht? So uh, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Belarus, we pronounce borscht and write borscht like this. And you, foreigners, somehow, I don't know why, pronounce borscht with T, borscht. Why? I don't know. So for me as a linguist, you know, it's uh, very interesting because um, you don't have such a soup, so you don't have an equivalent for this word, borscht. So you must have taken it uh, with transliteration to your language. Where do you take this T? I don't know. It's not even convenient to pronounce it, borscht. Borscht. So we pronounce it borscht, not borscht. <laughs> Very funny. And now we add onions to our mix, vegetable mix. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we have different colors already. So, and uh, we have our broth with cabbage boiling. So we are starting to work with potatoes. And one uh, notice about the vegetables. So uh, you have to um, fry it slightly, but not over fry. So you uh, have to constantly um, mix it together like my mom does. Our potatoes are going to, to the broth to cook together with cabbage. Now it's time to chop our tomatoes, which will go uh, to our vegetables, uh, to the pan. Uh, so we are using tomato just because we don't have any ketchup at home. Uh, so if you have ketchup or uh, tomato sauce or tomato paste, uh, you can use tomato paste uh, instead of uh, tomatoes. But we don't have that at home, so we are using tomatoes. So here is what we have here, our tomatoes, our onions, our beetroot and our carrots are here and in Russian we call it pajarka. So it's almost ready. As soon as our tomatoes will go soft, our pajarka will get ready. If you are using tomato sauce or tomato paste instead of just tomatoes, uh, as we did, you put uh, two or three spoonfuls of uh, the sauce to your mix uh, of vegetables and uh, simmer it together for several minutes just to um, just to give the time everything to mix uh, the colors, to mix the tastes of everything together and then you put it um, here to your cabbages, potatoes and broth. Now it's time to try the potatoes if they are cooked or not. So if the potatoes are cooked, uh, you add salt. Our potatoes are cooked already, are good. And now we put our vegetable mix to our soup. So uh, you can also uh, add some spices. Don't ask me what spices here. 
I don't know what. I just don't. I just have um, a mix of spices here. I don't. I don't remember what it was really. Just a little bit, and also mixing everything together. And the last touch for our soup is bay leaf and our garlic. So here we are. Our borscht is almost ready. I think it's maybe three minutes more so that our bay leaf and our garlic gave the soup its taste and aroma. You can serve your borscht with sour cream, black bread, as I showed you on this picture. That is how we like to eat our borscht in Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. So my dear friends, now you know how to cook borscht the Russian style. And you can cook it at your home. It's not very difficult, as you can see. So my dear friends, leave your comments down below. and. See you in the next video. Bye!